Steelers will have training camp in Latrobe. Art Rooney wants to wait and see what the circumstances are around that time. Wants to make sure that fans can get onto the campus of St. Vincent College. But if and when the players do take to Chuck Knoll Field, there's one battle, one battle that I'm really eager to see above and beyond any others. Good morning to you. Good Monday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports, and this is Daily Shot of Steelers. Comes your way bright and early every weekday morning. If you're into hockey and or baseball, I also offer up Daily Shots of Penguins and Pirates. There is no battle for the starting running back job. Oh, you're not going to hear any coaches say that. They they hate that stuff. They hate anointing any rookie, no matter how talented. So you're not going to hear someone say, Najee Harris is our starting running back. You might not even hear it three weeks into camp. It just runs counter to everything about the football culture. But you know, and I know, what we don't know is who will be the backup. Or, for that matter, what kind of backup would best fit into the Matt Canada offense and the wide zone blocking scheme? On one hand, you've got Benny Snell, author of Benny Snell Football, which hasn't gone all that well, I should add. And on the other, you've got Anthony McFarland, who's a guy who's known more for big-time speed and creating splash plays out of the backfield. Which one is the better fit? Which one is the better back? The Steelers will have to answer both of these questions. The reason I'm leaving out Kalen Balaj, by the way, is just uh, looking at his recent history, this looks like someone that you would have brought on uh, just as a, a spare part, maybe a special teams guy. I, I wouldn't read too much into him right now. Obviously, anything could change between now and camp. Benny Snell's got one problem above all, and that is his inability to recognize holes. He'll attack a hole once he recognizes it, and he can be an effective back, as we've seen in more than one spurt since he's been with the Steelers. We've also seen, and I can tell you that I appreciate, that he's a pretty dogged competitor when it comes to going between the tackles. Not everyone is. That's not for every running back. But it's really hard to get past that whole not seeing the holes thing, you know? The the times we've seen, and I remember once in, in Buffalo where the press box is in the end zone, one of the end zones there, and you can see the holes develop. It's a great, great way to watch football, by the way. Everyone should watch football from an end zone. Totally different than what you're seeing on TV. Because you see the gaps. And sure, it's easier, you know, sitting behind a laptop than it is being down there at field level. But when you see these holes and you see the offensive line pushing in one direction, and there's this Red Sea parting off to the side. And you see Benny turn right into the pack of Bills and get slammed to the ground. You think, you have to think, you know, what's with this guy? Why can't he pick up on some of these things? The Steelers have noticed that. The Steelers have recognized that. There's a reason the Steelers were very much in the market and made it their top priority to get a running back. But that doesn't mean that Benny can't be of use to you. There are teams that are going to be weaker between the tackles. There are situations where you're going to want to see the running game punish the other team's front seven. And in those situations, Benny's really the better choice for the backup spot or for the alternating spot. 
And one thing to bear in mind in this conversation in general is that Harris is coming in as a total rookie. He's never played 17 games, to say the least, in a season. The Steelers are going to have to take care of this kid. They're going to have to gauge his snaps. They're going to have to gauge his reps in practice. And it's not going to be a case of uh, Mike Tomlin running the wheels off a guy the way we saw with Le'Veon Bell, for example, in his last couple of years in Pittsburgh where Tomlin just didn't care. He was just going to get 35 touches, whatever it took, out of Lev in any given game, and it didn't matter. Because he knew Lev could handle it, and he wasn't worried about what was going to happen to Lev in three or four years because that wasn't going to be the Steelers' problem. To some extent, you do have to do business like that. It's a little cold, but running backs don't have long shelf lives. And where Najee is concerned, this is a pretty precious piece of cargo, you know? He's going to need the help. He's going to need the support. And some of that's going to involve taking the punishment that goes with running to the inside. So maybe Benny's your guy. Or, or maybe it is McFarland. Because Canada's scheme will task the running back with going to the outside and identifying the proper holes which are specific holes, which are scripted holes in this scheme that are away from the traditional spots on the line of scrimmage. And maybe he'll see Benny as someone who, A, isn't going to be your guy going around the edge because he's not going to have McFarland's speed, and B, isn't going to be your guy to recognize the holes. So maybe it's McFarland. Maybe he's the one that you send out there and hope that he can take advantage of some of the more basic running that Najee does and break a big one the way he did at Maryland pretty regularly. McFarland wasn't some afterthought with the Terps. This was a big time back who put up 220 all-purpose yards in a single game against Ohio State. And he did that in large part because once he saw Green in front of him, he was gone. This is still a player that the Steelers think highly of. He is also someone, and I really feel like I need to say this every time I bring up McFarland, that really deserves more of a benefit of the doubt for the way the 2020 season went. In addition to being a rookie, he didn't get many reps. When he did get reps... He was doing so behind an offensive line that did not appear to be excessively motivated toward run blocking, and he was doing so within an offensive system that had pretty much punted on the run as a whole. We have no idea what Anthony McFarland can or can't do. This portion of Daily Shot of Steelers is brought to you by the personal injury law firm of Luxembourg, Garbett, Kelly, and George, LGKG. They represent people who are hurt in car accidents, who've needed assistance with workers' comp, who filed medical malpractice claims. The attorneys at LGKG pride themselves in doing what they say they're going to do. It's important to them that when they make you a promise, they keep that promise. And they've been keeping those promises in our region for over 80 years. Learn more about them at LGKG.com. There's nothing in a training camp setting, in in the broadest sense, that compares to a running back battle. Because it's the one battle that you can actually watch play out. And you know what I'm talking about. Because they all get tons and tons of reps. Including in the preseason games. And I'll remind that while everybody else is going down to three preseason games, the Steelers are still going to have four because they're playing the Cowboys in the Hall of Fame game in Canton. So you're going to see all of these running backs a lot. You're going to see them in the first quarter, in the second quarter, and then you're going to see, you know, your Kalen Balazs and so forth and other guys maybe in the third or the fourth. But you're going to see them, and they're going to be 
making an impact in one direction or the other. This isn't going to be one of those camp battles where you have to rely on the reporters and who's doing what and what are the coaches saying. You're going to be able to see this, and it's going to be a very, very big deal this summer. Yeah, most of the headlines are going to be about Najee, and they should be. He is a special talent by every account. But mark my words, the backup running back is going to be something. And I can't rule out that they'd both get some kind of action. Once again, think of your opponent. Think of wanting to mix things up. Think about not wanting to be uh, excessively predictable. Think about throwing the ball. That's another one. Najee Harris said himself after the rookie minicamp that he'd done some lining up at wide receiver, and he expects to be used in that regard. Well now, you know, (laughs) remember the Steelers once had so much confidence in McFarland that they tried that ill-fated fourth down pass to him. Well, never mind how that went. Just think about what was invested in the process to have that play called in the first place. They believed in this kid's ability to do that. All kinds of variables, all kinds of fun that can be had within this battle. When we come back, just one question. Is he also going to be willing to train like Tom freaking Brady? Lately, Ben has had all the mobility of a bigger Billy Kilmer, drop 20 more pounds and train like a beast, and he could be more mobile. This is this is a fair point. Whether it's criticism or not, it's a it's it's just a fair, realistic point. As athletes age. And now, of course, we're seeing more commonly than ever across sports players competing at a high level into their late 30s and even into their early 40s. Who knows where that'll be a decade from now. And as they do that, they have to adjust their training. The training that worked for them even five, six years earlier no longer works. You're talking about work ethic here, West, and and, and I don't know that that's the issue here. Tom Brady's training regimen and what makes it outrageous is, yes, he's obviously a, a, you know, a workout freak and everything else here, but if you've read about it, he has adjusted. He's adjusted nutrition. He's adjusted uh, the types of exercises that he does, the emphasis points of his exercises. You have to do that. You have to change it. Not train harder, but change it. There's different things that the human body needs as it gets older in order to sustain itself. Not just from the uh, becoming more mobile, as you said. You're not going to see Ben go back to hashtag Ben being Ben. The number one reason that you train and get yourself in shape, especially as you're getting older, is to stay healthy, is to not get hurt. That's way at the top of the list. And I'm agreeing with you in this on principle. Ben absolutely needs to do that. Would the Steelers have had the guts at the time of their little contract back and forth? I'm not sure what other term I'd use to describe that. To have said to him, hey, Ben, uh, it's great to have you back for another year. It's it's great that you took this discount and everything else here. It's great that you're going to stay a Pittsburgh Steeler. There's some things we want you to look at from a conditioning slash nutritioning standpoint. Maybe they did. Maybe they didn't need to. Maybe Ben's already kind of figured that out on his own. Whatever the case is, you should know this. Ben's a... He's a pretty proud individual. He doesn't like to be embarrassed. 
And we've seen that. He reacts very, very poorly to being embarrassed. And what's the last sight that you saw of Ben? Yeah, those three picks. And then him and Marquis sitting on the sideline looking all sad. He didn't enjoy that. There's no amount of money. There's no paycheck anywhere that can cover for that feeling. He's absolutely going to come back in really good shape. I don't doubt that. What I'd be interested in finding out, and this won't be easy when it comes to Ben, is what he'll do specifically toward adjusting for his age. And by the way, give him credit. He did make it through all of last season coming off of a major surgery. The number of people who expected that to be the case was very, very low. So credit where credit's due. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everybody listening to Daily Shot of Steelers. We'll do another one tomorrow. At Point Park University in the heart of downtown Pittsburgh, they understand there's no substitute for real world experience and career building connections. Their innovative curriculum engages students with distinctive experiential learning opportunities. Point Park's pioneering co-op program empowers qualified students to work in full-time paid positions with their corporate partners while earning college credits. Visit pointpark.edu slash works to learn more. Career ready. That's the point. Point Park University. Your front door. Your car. Your gym locker. Your gun. Safety is a habit. Learn more about how to keep guns safe and secure. Visit projectchildsafe.org.